I'm going to say something scandalous, Ronnie. Go on. Plants are meat. And not only are they meat, they're delicious, especially if they're from Impossible Foods. They taste like beef. Exactly. Impossible is making meat history this summer. Yeah, they are. Summer of Impossible. I am so excited to be spending time cooking my summer foods, all that good stuff. And guess what? We can use Impossible sausages, Impossible brats. I mean, it's going to be a great summer for Impossible Foods. Impossible beef is made from plants and 19 grams of protein per serving. And it's better for the planet. And it's meat. Plant meat. Correct. So if you're looking for something to grab for your grill, grab some Impossible beef. Summer of impossible start making meat history today just head over to the meat aisle at your local grocery store grab some impossible beef or patties and get grilling homoglow is a marketplace that connects homeowners and renters with house cleaners you can get your home clean for 19 dollars. okay highly discounted initial cleaning they really want to prove themselves to you and they did for me uh there's discounted recurring cleanings with forever clean membership yeah just save time by hiring a professional to clean don't do it yourself okay you get high quality cleaning professionals this is wonderful we've used them our houses came out sparkling clean it was wonderful Visit www.homaglow.com slash podcast to book your first cleaning for only $19. That's H-O-M-E-A-G-L-O-W.com slash podcast. I'm Anna. And I'm Emily. And we're the hosts of Terribly Famous, a new podcast from Wondery. From Adele to Victoria Beckham and Lily Allen, we take you inside the drama-filled lives of our most talked-about celebrities to find out what it's like to walk in their shoes. She means their beautiful Prada shoes. Listen to Terribly Famous wherever you get your podcasts. Hello and welcome to Watch What Crappens, a podcast for all that crap we love to talk about on the old bras. I'm Ronnie. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the show. Please welcome Ben. Hello, Ben. You gorgeous Hi, creature. Ronnie. How are you? Good. How lovely to see you sitting in front of that playground. Yes. I'm here at the Benton, uh, Benton, Illinois playground, the brand new one featuring a house and a green slide and children swinging fresh from swing kings the leader in swing sets and adult sexual situations okay you're making it creepy now but it, was, <laughs> it was a nice opening until we got to that uh everyone welcome to the show today is welcome to crappy lake day season one episode five taking care of business uh, we mm-hmm. are on crappens on demand like we are every day now so if you would rather watch these videos it's a patreon feature patreon.com slash watch uh yes. you can watch our videos every day those are also on youtube for free a week late so you can watch archives over there if you're ever bored cleaning the house or whatever also bonus episodes are over on patreon and also we're going to have a new feature coming for uh something having to do with our new instagram live show we're gonna Bring our old show Take a Seat back, but we cannot call it Take a Seat. So we're going to call it something else, and it's going to be every other Monday starting at some point. We're not sure when, but we're yeah. going to be sure soon. And um, it's going to be know, so fun, you guys. You know how people will really know? Is that they follow at Watch What Crap Ends, and they to. turn their notifications on for us. They always get notifications about what we're up to, and that way you will know when we go live. Um, but uh, also, if you have an idea for what our new show should be called. Just let us know. Just like write a comment somewhere. somewhere so and, far, and tell I us. mean, we really loved to take a seat, that name. I thought that was such a cute name. Um, we can't use that. So we were thinking, be seated, have a seat. Uh, Ben's dad always called it, sit your ass down. Yes. Um, which I like. I like yeah. it. something close to take a seat. Doesn't have to be. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's something totally different. Maybe it's something else. Maybe something it's that's just fun. Maybe it's live. You know? Maybe it's maybe? just... Um, Maybe it's just, um, you know, I don't know, something fun and punny and, and like a fun allusion to something. Like, this is where we want creativity to reign supreme. Someone on Instagram suggested, this isn't, this isn't even my plate, you yeah, fucking bitch. it's not my fucking I plate. 
I loved it. So I love that too. Bring them, bring them on. Just comment on this post, uh, and we'll be looking to see if there are any good suggestions on there. But for now, guess what? We're going to recap this show, this here show called Welcome to Crappy Lake. Crappy Lake. Look, it's it's to, it's tootling along. I have to say, I'm actually very impressed with the way they structure this show because I notice what happens is that they allude to something that doesn't happen for like two more episodes. And I, and I mean that like not facetiously, like they, there are a lot of different characters. There are a lot of different locales, a lot of things going on on this show and they plant the seeds early in, in interesting ways. And so it really feels like there's kind of like a little bit of a tapestry that's being woven. So I'm, I'm like really impressed with the show. I, I'm really surprised. I normally don't like these that kind of, half hour comedy focused reality shows well it is just a to-do list right they start they start the show off with a to-do list from the mayor and now they just go through the to-do list but yeah you know and that doesn't even make sense i love some good i love some good to-do lists for towns i love them yeah i mean it doesn't really the show doesn't make sense like okay there are these two two reality stars come to this town the mayor gives them some to-do lists and they do the to-do lists for, and they're doing it for no other reason than just to do it because the show says they should do it. So it doesn't really make any sense. But given that, I mean, um, it, it works surprisingly well. It doesn't need to make sense. You know, doesn't everything need doesn't to. need to make sense in life. I'm okay That's right. with it. So um, day 16. Now, how many days are in this show? Because didn't they say they're going to be there five weeks? So how many 274. Weeks yeah, 274 <laughs> days. Yeah. Five times seven is 35 which means they would have 20 days left. So how long is this show? Is this like eight shows and fun, or is this going to be like 30? <laughs> is it just going to keep going? I don't know. Yeah. But, you know, I'll enjoy it while it's here. Just I want to know if they are really there for this whole shoot, or are they just flying back and forth to New York for, uh, you know, uh, to and arranging like the shooting schedule around their personal schedule? Because it does seem pretty wild that they're they're doing like a five week shoot in Illinois, and they're literally just living in that those motel rooms. Yeah, I think they're going back and forth. Although it's a very difficult place to get to and from. It's like Fantasy Island, whatever the opposite of Fantasy Island would be. Because, uh, yeah. you know, they have to take that little prop plane over and stuff. So. <laughs> yeah. And I'm honestly, I really am impressed with the way Luann and Sonia are um, interacting with people. Like, there really is kind of a, it seems like they really are developing relationships with people in the town and they're getting to know them. And they sort of like, it doesn't have um, the gawking factor that The Simple Life had, where it's like, and by gawking, I mean on behalf of Paris and Nikki, where they were like, oh my God, like, look at these crazy people. You know, it's like, they're just kind of, they're like, literally how do you just pump there. gas? Like, how do you even pump gas? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Girls, what is a sandwich? Ew. But part of the reason, like we've pointed out before, is that these two ladies are not Paris and Nicole. They were not no. born with silver spoons in their mouths. They both were born kind of in small places like this. And, I mean, I don't know, in my head. I'm making things up in my head. But from they were. what I remember, they were raised kind of like the people in this town. So it's almost like then they be they became rich for a little while, and now they're back on the way back to this town. So it's kind of, to me, it's like two people easing back into the life they'll probably yeah. end up leading again. Because, I mean, look, all you have to do is look at these two shopping with Luann with her 10 statement necklaces made out of construction paper. <laughs> One's like a popsicle stick shaped into a chain. I mean, I don't know. I was, I'm worried. For, I'm a little worried for them, I have to say. Yeah, but I'm like just surprised with the, the ease with which they have in interacting with strangers and like people who are sort of, you know, not as well off as they are, et cetera. And so um, I just am, I'm just surprised. I, I, I'm like, it's like very endearing. So uh, it starts with, so now we're watching them walking around with buckets around their motel that they're staying in. And Luann's like, well, her all and Akash usually have someone that comes to clean the motel rooms. And they're sick, unfortunately, sick of this town. So they just left. And so Sonia and I are stepping it up. We're going to, we're going to, what does the production call sheet say? We're going to clean rooms. Really? Oh, We're cleaning I'd hotel rooms to save this town. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> I'm totally following. So then we see a clip of Akash being like, yeah, we need you to help out. And Sonia's like, what do you mean? You know, like changing linens, taking out trash, that sort of thing. Can we fuck the trash first? <laughs> no. Not the human trash, Sonia. Literal garbage. <laughs> oh, I didn't realize Bethany Frankel was here, so we have to get her out of the motel rooms. Taking out the trash. <laughs> 
Put that in the put that in the follies. Well, look at this. It's the same room Billy was in. She's like, oh my god, he's texting me every five minutes. He just can't keep his hands off me. <laughs> wow. Well, so Billy was here. I hope he didn't leave behind any Countess and Friends memorabilia. God, I've got friends everywhere. Fans, I should say. There's a half-eaten apple on the nightstand. And you know that's from Sonia's room, because for whatever reason, Akash bought Sonia. An entire basket full of rotten fruit. Okay, that, <laughs> that, old, that old basket looked old, and uh, I guess she just gave one to him on his way out, which is nice, you know. Wow, so nice of them to leave a visual metaphor of our final season on Roni. <laughs> and Sonia just looks at the apple. She's like, "You're not the only one he left here half-eaten apple." God, I gotta dry my armpits. <laughs> That's <our> armpits <laughs> <laughs> she's like you know i don't make my own bed at home unless i have to because you know like a broker's coming over to show the house or something like that and even then i do a very lame job because i got professionals who make my bed or interns mainly interns <laughs> yeah so they change a bed and sonia's like oh do you know how to change a bed and the man's like you're really putting it in so tight watch your corner sonia Oh, God, don't fling that bed cover too hard in here. There's a lot on the bed cover, Sonia. All right? It's the same reason we don't shake Ramona. <laughs> don't disturb the critters. Um, I'm surprised Luann was not like, Oh, Sonia, why aren't you doing hospital corners? You know, I was a nurse, so I am familiar with hospital corners. <laughs> she is, though. She's, like, making the bed perfectly. She's like, well, if I had a nickel to bounce off of this bed. Sonia's like, I have a tooth. Use that. <laughs> Oh, bounce God, right I was, up. you know, Billy was asking to bounce a nickel off of my vagina. I said, it's just going to fall right in there. Now you get in there, too. So weird. I've never seen a tooth come up tails before. <laughs> <laughs> um, I personally was offended by Sonia's lack of hospital corners, but, you know, I can't expect Sonia to do hospital corners. Are you a hospital corner sort of person when you make your bed? I am now because of Below Deck. I mean, I learned something from Below Deck. I never had any idea what that was. I love it. It's like doing a little little taste of origami on your bed, you know? Well, it's really hard to do my bed like that because my bed frame's too thick and my mattress is too thick. And like getting my hands all the way. I've got like a thick comforter and like a foam thing on my bed. Because, you know, of course, yeah, I've foam got like ones. a thick foam thing. And then I've got another foam thing on top of the foam I was, thing. Ooh. On top of the... Oh, I'm so glad you brought that up. Because uh, an omission from Amazon Prime Day was, I forgot that I've been very interested in getting one of those foam toppers on a mattress. Do you like your oh, foam God, topper? Oh, God, I have it. Yeah, memory foam? Fuck yeah, I've got two of them. I've got two different kinds layered on top of each other. you got two toppers. Two toppers Double on one topper, mattress. Plus the mattress cover that's super deep to cover the two mattress toppers. And then that's also got a layer of whatever filling on it. So it's a very, very... Well filled right. bed. I may take the plunge because I think I would like a just a, a just a uh, just a smidge more puffiness on my mattress. <laughs> so um, they're flinging the mattress or the uh, covers, and it's getting shit everywhere. And Sonia's like, "Well, I got to take my allergy medication for the comforter." And the man's like, "Oh, you just dumped over the garbage, Sonia." <laughs> Sonia keeps knocking over the garbage, and then she's having an issue with that apple. So she like crams the apple into the garbage. She's like, that damn apple! And she like knocks over the garbage in the process of cramming the apple into it. It's just like a disaster. And they're fighting over who needs to pull their their sheets to whose side. And uh, Luann goes, "Oh my god!" Her her smokers laugh. Uh, which I have, by the way, I know it. And she's <laughs> doing that like just depths of hell. Uh, so she's laughing. It's like, look at this bed bug killer spray. And like, ew. <laughs> Somebody get Bethany Frankel in here. We'll surprise her. It'll be an ambush. So Sonia's like, you know what? The way I find bed bug spray, which I find to be a great prophylactic. I mean, how do you say it? Prophylact, prophylact, prophylactic, 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 whatever. Just hand it to me. Luann, give it to me. So she starts spraying the comforter or like the, the, the cover. And Luann's like, not on top. Not, you know what? It's like I said to that pirate, not on top. Um, so can, what does Sonia mean? That's prophylactic. prophylactic. That, that the bed bug spray is a prophylactic. I guess she's saying that it's a turnoff, maybe? Because it makes you not want to have sex. But wouldn't it make you want to have sex because you're killing the bed bugs? Isn't a prophylactic like a condom? 
I think, yeah, well, prophylactic, I think, is the umbrella term for things that uh, cause safer sex. Oh, that's why it's a prophylactic, because there's no bed bugs accidentally entering during adult activities. Oh, Maybe. guarding I, from I'm, or preventing the spread or occurrence of disease or infection. That's what it means. There we go. So she did use it very well. Yeah. (gasps) Preventing bed bug disease. I was like, what is it? I've just always thought condoms. Okay. So um, they're driving now in their big truck. And Luann's like, oh, God, it's so hard going to the shelter. Oh, yeah. They all look like Ramona. No matter what shelter you go to, there's a lot of scrawny little mangy Ramonas claiming they look younger than you while they deny pooping on the floor. (laughs) Well, you know, I had a dog for 30 years. That's right, the oldest dog known to man. Its name, that dog's name was mm, Mixie. Yes, Mixie. Remember Mixie? Good old Mixie. He used to stuff, hump his stuffed animals and stuff his humps. God, I love Mixie. Definitely a dog that existed for 30 years. Humping stuffed animal. I wish he was alive. I'd ask for tips. Mm. <laughs> did Luann, Luann did not have a dog for 30 years. Okay. That's impossible. <laughs> I know. That's... So did, did, did they she get just a kept... new dog and Luann just didn't know the other one died? She just kept saying hello to Mitzi. <laughs> Is what? she just going to erase, erase Aston, her, her beautiful Westie? She's like, I had a dog named... Dairy Queen. It's like you're just naming dogs after things outside the window. No, no, <laughs> name was Dairy Queen. <laughs> so they go to the mayor's office, and uh, Mayor Fred Condritz is there. And he's like, now, now, the shelter is very important to the community. Now, this little fella in this picture was found under a trailer, and we adopted him. And his name is Osborne Earl Smith Condrit. I was like, how many people has that dog killed? That is a serial <laughs> killer name. That, is- <laughs> that dog has been featured on Morbid, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> like, Wait, was that dog just arrested in Long Island last week? <laughs> he's 14 pounds and i just love him to death go wait what's his eating plan wow <laughs> that's what we call dog go wait all right go wait wow. dog so how old is he about 28 or so <laughs> <laughs> so he's got about 22 years left on his life am i right <laughs> well he certainly would god if only my sweet dog Oc- Wafina, we're still here. Oh, like the comedian? No, like the the dog, not the so, comedian of the water. By the way, are they only casting Aquafina th- in things now? Is Aquafina in every fucking animated movie? I've never heard you saw the duck. You saw more. the duck preview, didn't you? You saw what the, the duck. What the fuck is that movie? What the, the fuck? Who wants what to see a movie fuck? about a duck? Nobody Who, wants. Okay. Nobody cares about. You know why there's nothing made about? Well, there was Daffy Duck, but otherwise. Well, there was. I there were ducks. other ducks. There were the other ducks too. What were their names? Donald and his nephews. Donald. Okay, uh, Ducktails. There are a lot but of in ducks. Modern times. Okay. I think we've all learned that ducks are stupid, and nobody want. They're hard to cook correctly. Like nobody wants okay. to see a movie about a duck. I love ducks. I, ducks are some of my favorite birds. I mean, I see a duck, I'm happy. I love a duck. I have a wooden duck in my bedroom. I yeah, love okay, a duck. Don't tr- and okay, even I don't want to see this movie. But I saw this one of. Five trailers, I think, before the Barbie movie, and every single trailer was worse than the next. And that, and this was in the mix. This movie, okay, the premise. There's a duck movie coming out, an animated duck movie. I know I'm not the target audience, but I think I think, I think our children deserve that. better than this. Okay, they do. This the premise of this duck movie is that these ducks migrate in the wrong direction and they go to the big city. Well, Idiots. guess what? They're ducks in the city. It's called. We, there are they, ducks they in the, the city. They go to the park. And I just, I'm like, I just don't. They get I, I'm refined like, carbohydrates. Those ducks. Those are smart ducks, not stupid ducks. I would like to know why these ducks can't turn around and go back to their pond once they realize they've gone to the city. I'm sure that will be built into the story. But I was just watching this. I was like, is this the best we can do? And then you have an Aquafina. It's funny because I, I told Dom, I was like, I bet that was Natasha Leone. He goes, I think it's Aquafina. And now you've said it's Aquafina. So I oh, think it's yeah, Aquafina. it's 100% Aquafina. I know her voice so well now because she's in every animated movie that's ever made from like from the time she became famous till the time we die. That's the only voice I'm ever going to hear. By the way, very funny in them. She's very funny in all of these things. I'm just like, why is she in this? But you know why she is? Because she's the only thing you remember. I don't even remember. I remember sitting through that entire preview and then going, what the fuck is this duck movie supposed to be about? I don't even get it. They're like, hey, fly a little duck. And they're like, hey, little duck, if you have to go to that pond, we're going to leave you. And then Aquafina keeps getting run over by things. Yeah. That's the part I remember is Aquafina gets run over. Yeah. 
It gets run over several times. A very resilient pigeon. Did you get the trailer for Wonka? I did. I mean, um, I on. need Wonka to have a little more sadistic energy. Willy Wonka Thank was you. a sadistic fuck. Who's this That's, nice, sweet person playing Willy Wonka? Who's I kid? literally said the same thing to my friend. I was like, I saw this trailer. It looks like garbage. Okay, I don't need my Willy Wonka to be like an uplifting story of magic and whimsy. Willy Wonka was a fucker, and he was crazy and strange and sadistic. And I need my Willy Wonka to be twisted and strange. I don't. I, I that trailer. Like it offended me. It actually, it almost offended me as much as the Marvels trailer. That one also. I was like, I can't with this. What I don't know what even's happening we here. Can't move in. We can't move on yet because I still need to talk about Willy Wonka. Who is that kid playing? Is that Til- Timothy Chalamet? Who's He's that? playing young Willy Wonka. It's like the Willy Wonka no, origin story. I don't want him. I want Tom Holland. Okay, he can do it. That guy's got the chops to play. You know, sadistic. Okay, I yeah. just watched him on an Apple TV show. That kid can do it. This other guy, no. Happy no. Willy Wonka. Also, then he gives people chocolate and they start flying around and stuff. Uh-uh. I don't think that that's the point. I think they have to go to the chocolate factory to see the magic. Or maybe that gets outlawed or something later in the film once he's destroyed I, all the other chocolate companies or whatever. But I don't know. Like You're trying to get me to root for the person that killed M&Ms in this fake world? I'm not going to root for him. Okay? I literally hated every single frame of that trailer. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to say that was the worst trailer. That was worse than the Marvels. It was like, I was like, Hollywood is 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 broken. Like this is like, how are we churning out this schlock? And then they get mad at us for liking reality TV when like the alternative is watching Wonka. Sorry, oh, so the terrible. Marvels. Okay, so it took me a minute to think about that one. That's the one where the teenage girl from the new Disney Marvel one. Mm-hmm. is meeting up with Captain America? Are we just wasting Captain... No, not Captain America. Or no, America. Captain Marvel. Captain it's everybody. like Brie Larson. What's it called? Brie Larson. Cap- Brie Larson. Brie Larson. She's like, the well, I got out of my room. Cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, I Fitting. Like a Brie. So Brie L- it's like... It was something like, she controls time. She makes en- she makes things out of energy and light. And then when, when I use it, I switched places with her. And I was like, this is like this this is everything that's wrong with the movies right now. It was a, that was a terrible preview too. Was there anything good to see? There was you nothing know. good. There Barbie was, was the, good though. So good Barbie for was them wonderful. For that. Barbie was wonderful. And in fact, uh, I don't know if you noticed this, but we had a a friend who passed away last year, and they included her in the Barbie movie in a very very subtle way. Did you see her, Kimberly? No. Kimberly. What did they Eaton? say there was that. No, there was that montage of. There's a montage of real women. I saw and that, and I thought that looks like Kimberly. That was Kimberly? That was Kimberly. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that isn't is that so, so sweet? sweet? It made I up for all the shitty trailers. I saw her, and I thought, that is so crazy. That looks just like Kimberly. And I, you know, and that movie gets you, like, kind of misty anyway, especially that part. So I was getting misty, and I was like, oh, Kimberly. Yeah. And then it was her. That That's it was so her. cool. Yeah. So that was a very Aww. nice moment. So anyway. Aww. Aww, see, we can be nice guys. Oh, yeah, let's never do world. that again. It's time for a commercial. It's time for a crappens come. Ronnie and Ben here. This segment of Watch What Crappens is brought to you by Audible's new music competition podcast, Breakthrough. It's like changing the game for audio-only series by being the first of its kind and by stripping away the superficial. The series is like really reaffirming what matters most, which is pure talent. So... What do you get when you throw a real housewife, a freelance songwriter, and an auto-tune producer in a recording studio? Well, thanks to Extreme Auto-Tune, you get a bop that Bravo fans will be pumping up on their playlist for years to come. To name a few, Sheena Shea from Vanderpump Rules has Good as Gold, Kim zolciak Beerman from Real Housewives of Atlanta has Tardy for the Party, and Melissa Gorga from Jersey has On Display. Whoa, 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 the ring doesn't mean a thing. Wow, 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 wow. Okay, well, maybe we should leave the real singing to the professionals, like the talent in Audible's new podcast series, Breakthrough. Ron and I have been binging this singing competition contest, and the singing and songwriting on it has been next level stellar. 1000%. And the finale brought us to tears. So many emotions. We're just completely blown away by all these five artists and their raw talent. Yeah, and it's like really cool. They all have different personal and musical backgrounds. Like there's country, it's Caribbean, there's Cuban, and their backgrounds just like they really shine through during these songwriting challenges. 
It's been incredible to witness them dig deep and push themselves to the next level because the coaches really aren't just there to say, like, you're good or, you know, that was pitchy. They're really trying to develop them and their voice into their own artistic creation. It's pretty cool. Oh, my God. Check it out yourself. You can listen and catch up on the latest episodes on Audible or wherever you get your podcast. Go to audible.com slash crappens. That's audible.com slash crappens. If you're hiring, you know it's incredibly hard to attract top talent. And with the current labor market conditions, it's even harder than ever. That's why you want a partner who gets it. Zip Recruiter. You know who knows how tough it is right now? Zip Recruiter does. Um, but guess what? They figured out solutions for the problems that you're facing. See for yourself. Right now, you can try them for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash crappens. ZipRecruiter is ready to tackle your recruiting challenges. Yeah, to reach more of the right people, ZipRecruiter posts your job to over 100 job sites. And listen, the pricing at ZipRecruiter is straightforward. There are no surprise costs. Yeah, want first dibs on talent? ZipRecruiter lets you invite the most qualified people to apply for your job. Team up with a hiring partner who understands what you need. ZipRecruiter. Four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Just go to this exclusive web address to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash crappens. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash C-R-A-P-P-E-N-S. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. Commercial. Okay, okay so... um. Let's see. They're okay. So now they have to go to Franklin County Animal Control. And Sonia sees a sign and she goes, Animal Control? That's not sexy. We need a different name. <laughs> Franklin County, animals fucking each other and then not taking responsibility for what happens afterwards. How's that? I mean, you know, it's like trouble, but sexy trouble. Bestiality center of America. <laughs> <laughs> animals fucking <laughs> could we get a little more subtle Sonia we can't put the F word right on the sign Sonia <laughs> doggy style fuck plaza no pussies allowed <laughs> a gay animal control center <laughs> poodle vagina penis zone <laughs> <laughs> so um they go in and Sonia's like, hello, you hardworking people. And it's another business in Benton where they've got tie-dyed shirts made with their logo. So <laughs> did Benton just pull it together and just say, listen, guys, we've got TV cameras soon. We need logos and tie-dye at every business. Make it happen. And Kristen's like, I'll do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to put everyone in tie-dye so I remain the best known dressed person in this town. <laughs> yeah, she definitely, she, Kristen, the, the, the proprietor of the, um, high tea, the high, like Cinderella themed high tea in town definitely was like pushing a tie dye agenda to elevate her own status for sure. 100. What? So then, um, the main lady whose name is Bobby Overturf. Oh, I um, love that name. Bobby Overturf. Oh God. I love it. I just feel like it's, how did she end up here? Shouldn't she be the lady making, like, lines on the freeway? What? Just because her name is Overturf? <laughs> yeah. She should be, like, I feel like when you have a descriptive name like that, it goes against nature to do something that's not exactly what your name is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm surprised so, uh, Sonia didn't call her Bobby Astroturf. So um so she's like okay hi what do you guys what are you ladies looking for today and the man's like oh well we heard that you might need a little help here and so um they, hates them by the way because she, them. she keeps calling them you ladies and she does it multiple times <laughs> you she's ladies. like hi you ladies so hello you ladies so what can we help you ladies with today <laughs> what do you need here today you ladies i was like oh damn poppy's hateful that's, that's that's hate speech. Well, because she knows, she's like, oh, I can see these are the sort of people that are coming here and make a lot of jokes about bitches. I'm just not in the mood today. Bobby Overturf, put a smile on your own television. Okay, other Bobby Overturf, I'll do it. I'll but do I it. I feel like they really warmed up Bobby Overturf. And can I also say Bobby Overturf could play my mother in a, if really? anybody ever makes a biopic. <laughs> Bobby Overturf. <laughs> I guess I can see that, yeah. From back in the that. day. My, okay. You know, 
you know, she's just a redhead, you know. So um, Bobby is like, well, we could always use some help. I don't know, from a couple of sluts, but we are overloaded, <laughs> like that one over there. Hey, don't feel bad about saying that. It's literally true, Overturf. <laughs> um so um they are uh saying like you know bobby's saying <laughs> bobby's saying how the shelter fills up quickly with dogs and then there's like they they walk in to see the dogs the dogs are of course they're in cages and they're upset and they're barking and luann's clutching her chest like oh, oh this is like the time i played cincinnati and they booed me off the stage sorry i called to cleveland who's bought how was i supposed to know and they walk through and the dogs are just barking and howling. And the one's like, no, I said, give me a bee. A bee. That's off key. <laughs> like this. <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Woof. 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 <laughs> um, I'm sorry. They don't like that song because they're literally in captivity. Oh, <laughs> yes. I'll think about that next time. And Sonia's like, I mean, these dogs are all in great shape. I mean, they're just all so cramped in these little kennels. They can't even dry hump each other in there. So <laughs> who wants to adopt a dog that looks like it's going to rip your face off? Okay? And <laughs> Poppy's like, That's what I always ask anytime Bethany gets a date. <laughs> so bobby is like all right well let's get a dog we'll show you how to prep a dog and luann's like well we're here to volunteer so how much do we get paid for this again anybody <laughs> so they of course they pull out the cutest dog at the center charlie. the charlie this dog was adorable actually though ron i have to say uh i went out this morning and i saw just like the perfect dog and you know i'm not a dog person but I saw a dog that I think I may have fallen in love with because it was so cute and like the perfect size and like so well behaved. It just sort of sat down in its corner next to its owner. And I actually snuck a photo of it. And I'm going to actually present a photo here on Craps on Demand because it was so cute. I had to Aww. take a photo. And you know, I am not normally the one who does, who like is like all gaga about a dog. But I was like, I love this dog. You know what dog. you're gaga about? well-behaved things no matter what they i am um, but this one was well also cute things. i think this dog had some shibu inu in it so i think that that may be because i love a shibu inu they're so cute here wait here it's coming up all right on stage on there do you see this dog can you see it also like the royal dogs that the queen has or a corgi but it, but it wasn't it's cut off because there was a chair in front of it but like it wasn't corgi-ish but it was so it is cute it is so, so cute that is a cute dog it has a little fox face you just want to yeah you just want to smush its cheeks in and everything i was trying to get it to look at me but i also didn't want to be a creepy person so and it's very well sheared you have to shear that kind of dog look how it's sheared yeah but it's so looks like cute. a plush stuffed animal it is really it's cute so cute so anyway well spotted just, well you. spotted so do you want to empty its anal glands <laughs> Because that's what Sonia and Lou are about to do. I actually did it. I walked up to it and I said, excuse me, sir. I'm just going to empty. I'm just going to drain this dog's anal glands real quickly. Thanks. <laughs> but without warning, like them. Because um, the guy's like, you guys want to empty some anal glands? And the man's like, well, I'm a nurse, but I haven't had to do that since I was married to Tom. Am I right? <laughs> So the guy lifts the dog's tail and just squeezes and it splurts on Luann's face. And Luann squeals, <laughs> literally like someone being plucked out of hell and then dropped back in. Like, <laughs> so he goes, oh, we didn't like that. <laughs> just Well, I mean, you know, people get hemorrhoids. I guess dogs get anal glands. I don't know. But um, I know that it may have gone into Luann's mouth, though. And then just cuts to that going, oh, the anals. <laughs> <laughs> the angles. So Sonia's like, you know, I've got a good idea. Why don't we make a why don't we build a doggy run? It's like, yeah, yes, yes, you should. So, but unfortunately, Bobby Overturf doesn't really have a budget with her rescue, so they haven't been able to even build a, a, a humble fence for this place, which is so sad that they can't they don't have enough funding to even build a simple dog run. Well, it's funny just how Sonia comes in and Sonia explains things. Sonia explains to them. Son explains them. She's like, uh, so they don't have any room, right? And Bobby's like, yeah, we don't have room. And Sonia goes, but wouldn't it be great if they could go outside and run around? And Bobby's like, like a dog run, you ladies. And she's like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, they're barking cuz they're not running around. 
<laughs> okay, well, I can show you what we were thinking about already before you came up with that brilliant idea we never thought of because we're I too know. poor and stupid, you fucking you lady. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, I, well, you know what? This law and this would be perfect, you know, because, you know, you could have an event and you can show off all the dogs and people come, come by and we can, we can make it look like a Saint-Tropez. You know, we have some plastic chairs we haven't been using lately. So do they have dogs in Saint-Tropez? I think they do. Uh, and Sonia's like, well, I fell in love with that terrier over there, but he seems like he'll rip my face off. And Bobby's like, oh, yeah, he's real ferocious behind the fence, but when you get him out, he's fine. They call that cage crazy. Oh, yeah, tell me about it. I've been to prison. When anyone would pass my cell, I'd just hold on to the bars, and I would say, give me a pianist. <laughs> I'd then throw a bologna sandwich in my face with a mustard packet on the inside. Talk about cage crazy. Uh, uh, she's been afraid of swallowing ever since. That's why I get more men. Speaking of Lacage, you should come to our follies. Mm. So, uh, Luan, so now it's three hours later, and they're just driving around because they've got nothing to do. And they're really excited because, like, I feel like every episode they drive by the Dairy Queen and are like, oh, if only we could go to Dairy Queen. But this time they actually prepare for it. They've taken their, their, their enzymes, they're, they're prepared. And they're like, all right, let's go to Dairy Queen. My stomach is ready. And I just like love this. Felt, this felt like such an authentic moment. Like they're like, we haven't eaten in 10 years. <laughs> and we definitely have not had dairy. And we said, fuck it. We're in Illinois. Let's do this. Yes. Have you ever had a binge friend? Yes. God, I've had a binge friend. And oh, I am the binge friends. friend. I've had a couple. But oh my God, some of these binge friends. It's, it is like going to a crack house together, except a crack house is like Arby's. And you just get all this food, and you just sit there in the car and just binge together. I mean, wow. What, what times. What times I've had. So they basically do that. So Sonia has her Tums, and Luann's taking her digestive enzymes. And they are literally dancing, so excited for this. And uh, Sonia's like, wow, here we go. It's busy. And it's not, you know. So Luann's <laughs> ordering. She goes, okay, I've been so excited for this. Can we have a plain vanilla cone for me and a strawberry milkshake for my friend Nancy in the back? Right, Nance? <laughs> pretending you've got a whole family to order from. Hold on, let me see what my sister wants. Also, Hold a hamburger and fries. And Hold on, yes, I, I got Mixie. For Mixie's Jack. on the phone. Uh, hello? It's like, so, Luann, you can't use Mixie a second time. Oh, I'm sorry. I've got Meineke. Leslie Meineke would like a banana split and uh, FedEx Kinko's requests a, uh, an ice cream sandwich. <laughs> so then Sonia orders for herself. She's like, okay, well, do you have a soy whipped cream or just regular? And she's like, come on, Sonia, when in Benton, you can't say soy here. She goes, okay, I have a chocolate vanilla soft serve cone and a chocolate hard dip. And also, I'm going to do a banana split with hot fudge, not so a cock, just a giant cock. <laughs> Sonia, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Um, I approve of all of this, but I also question the the logistics of it because this entire show has been about how hot this town is and they just always put the temperature on screen. And now they are getting too much ice cream to be consumed in time, I feel. But my, that's my fear. friends and a true Ben friend does not go and hide. They park right in front of the Dairy Queen and they sit on the back of the truck together and they binge. Not yeah, and they fun. just sit there eating. But I, I just felt like there was like too many cones, or whatever. But they don't care because by the time they get to their their uh, the <laughs> banana split, which Luann is so excited, she's like, "Oh, I was hoping you would say a banana split." Because I, of course, I would never order such a thing because it's for depraved animals. But when you ordered it, well, I mean, I can't help but know I'm gonna have a few bites of that thing. But it was all melted, and they're like, they didn't even Delicious. care. Delicious. Mm. So they're sitting on the back of the truck, and Luan's like, listen, the pics we took at the dog shelter, my heart was just sunken. I just felt so down and... Deflated? Yes. And old? Wait. Desperate? It's okay, Luan. I'll share my men with you. You don't have to steal them anymore. I'm talking about the dogs, Sonia. They're just so sad. We have to do something. It's I so hard. I <laughs> Something more than that, Sonia. <laughs> You know, it's just so hard to be around all those animals that don't have love in their life. It's like watching people who've never been to Cabaret. It's just, it's not right. <laughs> it's like Bethany's TikTok in dog form. <laughs> so much neediness. <laughs> Crazy eyes. Sort of 
scary and unrelenting, and yet you can't look away. By the way, Bethany Frankel's doing her whole, we are going to unionize reality stars. And there was an article today that was like, reality stars come out in support of Bethany Frankel. Bronwyn Wyndham Burke is in fan of, I was like, Bronwyn Wyndham Burke? What union are you going to join? Go, go home. I think there's a difference between reality stars and reality starred. Okay, as in you starred at one point, but now you're not on a show. So what are you? What like what? What are you being protected against? No. So um, in f- in favor of the reality star union, though. By the way, I am. I'm in favor of that. Protections yeah, for everyone. They need that because they. There do, are a lot of things that need unions. They actually quoted Leanne Locken, and Leanne's like, "Yeah, they use you every day. They rerun that shit in, in perpetuum, and you got to listen to your, every mistake you ever made over and over again. Every dumb thing you ever said, every iconic line you ever came up with, and made them millions. They use it every goddamn day. And what do I get for it? All right, a free, free facelift every now and then, but still." You know, it's not right. It's not right. I mean, like, you pay one small amount of money, you get a million iterations of your face. But you know what? That being said, please drive by an infinity dress. You just pay a small sum and you get a million iterations of a dress. Enjoy. <laughs> so then uh, Luana and Don- Donia go to, I don't know why, Luana and Sonia go shopping at Sue's. Time to go shopping at Sue's, which they've seen multiple times but haven't gone in yet. Yes. And so they start looking through. This is the weirdest store. It's got wigs, but it's only got power Meemaw wigs. It's only <laughs> yeah. Meemaw cut hair. These are wigs for people who want to look like that lady who used to be the spokesperson for Marshalls. You know, it's like, you know what I would like? I'd like a pert little haircut that'll give me a sassy attitude that'll talk about savings. <laughs> it's like they're all short it's like no one gets Paige to wear Davis-y. wigs and role play as like a long-haired person you know <laughs> she was know. like i'm i'm sorry but if you're gonna be a different person you know who it's gonna be a short-haired person okay <laughs> have fun i've got long hair privilege my name is sue the place is called sue so you're gonna have hair like sue okay because guess what this long hair it's just covering up my real short hair so um uh they they're all in there and Sonia's like, oh my god, look at this. This is on sale for eighty-eight dollars. I mean, do you think they raised the prices because we're in town? I mean, that happens to me all the time. Bill people here, I'm coming to a city and there's a citywide memo that goes out that says, Raise your prices. Sonia Morgan's coming into town. May, let's squeeze her for all the coins she's got. You know what happens? Sonia, you ain't got coins what are you faking and the man's like well to sonia everything's expensive i mean if she had coupons for shoes <laughs> she would have had them in her pocket so they try on wigs and sonia tries on a really cheap looking blonde one yeah and she's like i'm the baddest bitch on the upper east side and the man takes like a little short one you know and <laughs> sonia's like oh that really shows off your bone structure or you could be lisa rena for halloween I was thinking more Annie Potts, but that works too. You know, I'd be, I'd be, I love having a retro wig on. And Sonia's like, you know, I'd be rocking that body of Lisa Rinna, you know, and you'd never see me again. And so then Luann suddenly gets a call from Brian, and he is from, I think, Swing Kings. Is that what it was called? And uh, he has a huge piece of news for them, which is that, after all, turns out they have a playhouse for the playground, and the, it's going to be ready. It's going to be ready yesterday. Yeah, and Luann's like, by the way, I don't have a credit card, ladies, but I will be back, I promise. And Sue's like, really, bitch? She's like, yes, <laughs> I will be back. She's wearing like 10 statement necklaces, her free wig. She's got like, <laughs> she's dripping with stuff that she's taken from the store. And she's like, bye, ladies. This, this door that's clearly hanging on by a thread. And she's like, oh, yes, I'll be back with a credit card. Don't you worry. Just uh, don't wait up for me, though. Don't wait up. Uh, but I will be back at some point. <laughs> Oh, and Sue's like, I would never sue you because my name is Sue and we don't do things that our names describe in this town. Okay. <laughs> um, so let's see. Then they're talking about Craig. So Sonia calls Craig and she's like, Craig, I got good news. And it's like, we got the playground. And she goes, yeah, I mean, uh, we got the playground. Like the went, I was supposed to be in the mind news of the land. And the one's <laughs> like, I think he has a crush on you, Sonia. She goes, I don't know. Craig belongs to the town. (laughs) We'll never be able to make him settle down. He's a man who just loves his augers and 
backhoes and things. I guess I am sort of like an auger and a backhoe, so maybe I could be the town and he could be mine. Who knows? Uh, so then we go to Craig Miles, public works director. And Craig's like, these girls have more energy than anyone I ever met. They just run me ragged. I haven't even had time to change my shirt. But I love it because I'm a workaholic, so I fit right in with those two. I was like, Craig, it has taken you three years and you didn't clear out a playgrooms, a playground <laughs> space. Please don't tell me how hard you work. Craig. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's time for a commercial. It's time for. You know what I love about saving money is that when I save money, I can then spend that money on things I really want to spend money on, like nice food or board games. Rakuten helps us to be a smarter shopper and save money on just about everything. Rakuten is the smartest way to save money when you shop. We have things we need to buy, whether it's home essentials or a self-care treat just for you. Yeah, with Rakuten, we can get cash back on clothes, groceries, travel, and much much more. In fact, there are over 4,200 stores across every single category on Rakuten. Even better, you can stack cash back on top of other deals like store sales and credit card points. In case you're wondering, the stores in Rakuten are ones that you know and love, and lots of cool ones waiting to be discovered. I mean, some of my personal favorites are Expedia, CVS.com, JCPenney, Instacart. I mean, it just goes on and on. Join the 17 million members who are already saving. It's free and easy to join Rakuten and start getting cash back. Start shopping at Rakuten.com now, or download the Rakuten app to start saving today. Your cash back really adds up. That's R-A-K-U-T-E-N dot com. So they drive to this space um, and um, Sonia's, they're, they're driving down the road to the park. And so it's like, oh, look at it. Look at everyone sprucing up. It's like they know a new playground's coming. And look, they're mowing their lawns. They're putting out... They're putting out welcome blankets. Look, they're even taking out their shotguns and aiming them at, aiming them at us. Wow, I, it's just everyone's doing such wonderful things to welcome us here. <laughs> wow, everything. Remember how everything was black and white? Now it's turning color again. This is amazing. All because of our playground. What's so, what pleasant you know, film? What maybe I'm yeah, pleasant film. <laughs> it's like suddenly, <laughs> every, like film. all the trash is cleaned up out of the yards and. Kids are, you know, like coming out to check the mail again. The mailboxes are all straight. The house has turned color. Yeah. So um, Sonia's like, you know, I've never done a playground before. I mean, I was married to J.P. Morgan's grandson. So we just freaking ordered it. Okay, it comes. You insure it. And you invite the kids. Stop acting like get it, building a playground is like buying new shoes or something like that. You'd, it's not a normal thing for people to buy build playgrounds. She's like, oh, yeah. I mean, I've just, I was just too wealthy to do it by myself. But like, you know, normal people build their own playgrounds. So like you're just ordering playgrounds in New York City. There yeah. should be a playground there. Do it. I'll insure it later. <laughs> um, so they get there. Uh, and the first order of business is that Luann just backs into a dead end sign, which is a, a good metaphor for the show also. I mean, I, like, I feel oh. like it's, it is a good metaphor. You know, they just see dead, dead ends and they just keep <laughs> knocking them down and going on, you know, and promising yeah. to turn in their credit cards later. And they never do. They just keep going. Yeah. I mean, dead ends are human constructions, right? Uh -huh. The human, human constructs. constructs. Yeah. So, um, Sonia's like, well, uh, so Lu 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 Luann's like, well, I think the mayor's going to be really happy. And uh, the guy, the slide guy goes, well, I guess we got a street sign to fix. And Sonia's like, Craig, <laughs> Craig, what do we do? Craig, look at me. I'm taking your picture, Craig. Let's take a selfie with this down sign, Craig. <laughs> Come on, Craig. Um, so... When we first came to the playground side, it was like a nice patch of grass. And now they paved over it in anticipation of the playground coming in. Now, I don't, I haven't been to a playground in a long time. Are most playgrounds on cement or like on, on like paved areas? I thought they were like in a gravel pit or something like that. Or it's not grass. cement. They put down like some paper. It didn't look like paper that was coming up. I think they didn't put the ground yet. Usually oh. they're put on like, um, I think these days like on asphalt, but I think they're not asphalt, uh, fake grass but over there no that's a mcdonald's playground over there i think it's just the dirt i'm just like having images of children like sliding down the slide onto hot asphalt and hurting themselves oh really i live next door to a playground and let me tell you <laughs> oh really fun. oh really let me tell you about playground i'm like why am i wondering what a playground works 
it looks like I literally walk past one every single morning on my little walks. And um, we have very big rocks here in Texas, very sharp. I don't know why they put the sharpest rocks in this playground. But Always. these kids slide into sharp rocks. I'm like, how many bloody children are walking around this neighborhood? Because they put thick rocks in front mm -hmm. of the slide. Like, we don't give a fuck. It's dirt and rocks. That's what you get. I'm looking at pictures of playgrounds right now to see. That's like, creepy. What... And if you ever, if you die tonight, <laughs> and somebody looks through your Google history, you're going to regret that. When I come Empty back, Empty playgrounds, a grim... childless playgrounds. When I come back as a grim reaper to take you to hell, I'm going to be like, um, so you realized <laughs> you were searching children on playgrounds today before you died, right? Was that a great, was that a great decision? <laughs> um, that was, that was a creepy version of this used to be my playground. Um, anyway, my Google it's image search, my Google so image search bad. of playgrounds showed that almost every single one of them had some sort of astroturf or gravel, and some even had a wood chip situation, which also feels dangerous um, under them and not asphalt. But now, when I think about my childhood, I'm like, I think I probably had some slides that just poured me out onto hot asphalt. That's how I am. How I am. I feel like your childhood was too fancy. I feel like you slid off and you just like fell into a boat, like a lightly dusted, you know, I don't know, like what's that? <laughs> Not astroturf, <laughs> but um, yeah, something like light, something like, cushy, like, a you know, like you pillow. fell down. They're like, don't hurt the children. Like you would slide down, you'd like lightly bounce on whatever the floor <laughs> was. Your mother would be there just to grab hold you. She'd bounce into her arms and be like, Ben, I'm so proud of you, you gorgeous, smart little creature. I wish. I wish. I, I, I was like around fanciness, but I myself and my family, we were not inherently fancy, uh, sadly. I've met you and your family, so I've never been to your house or anything, so I'm not judging you from there, but I'm telling you that mentally, psychologically, and looks-wise, you're pretty fancy. So... <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I wish I wish I could verify all that. I think I think fancy tendencies for sure, but like uh, you have a sub stack with fancy in the word. I do. Like you've dedicated your life, but it's to called like, fancy. but it's no big deal. Fancy. Well, it's well, but the, here's the like thing, though, Ronnie. Yeah, wouldn't no a fa wouldn't me. a truly fancy person not have fancy in their sub stack? Don't I just like blow up my spot right there? No, because you're saying no. It's no big deal. I'm fancy. That's how I take it. Like, it's no big deal. It's just like fancy, everyday fancy that I do. I'm going to teach you guys how to do if it. If I were truly fancy, I would not be doing a podcast. Oh. Wow. I would be I would be coasting off of an inheritance, doing things <laughs> in Fairfield County, Connecticut. Uh. You know, eating, eating, I don't know, snails somewhere. No, you'd still be doing it. You have too much talent to just be contained to a <laughs> snail eater. <laughs> we need to press I down. wish I were I wish I were a wasp. That's why I that's why I do the things I do, because I, I like aspire to be a wasp, but I'm not a wasp. Well, guess who I'm else? I'm just is a Jewish a wasp. kid. I'm just a Jewish kid from Westchester. Well. Yeah. So a hot one. Don't forget that. Oh, so thank Craig, you. Uh, Craig is also not a wasp. And Craig, well, maybe he is. I don't know, actually. So Sonia's like, Craig, Craig, what do we do? Craig, let's take a selfie. So the stuff is delivered. The slide people are there. And we see Lee Messer Meth. Lee Messer Meth. Messer Smith. Messer Smith. He's a mess. He's, he, uh, so we have we've had like Barb Method. Overturf, who is like her last name is all about like doing things on turf. She's the one who should have taken care of the surfacing of this playground, I'd like to add. We have uh. Sue, who is doesn't sue people when they steal from her store. And now we have Lee Messer Smith, who is some sort of he's a messy Smith of some sort. Or he's got meth in his last name, so maybe he's just like a cokehead. Could be. Well, he was so, very excited. He was. I felt like he was being a little, a little on for the camera. If you ask me. Well, he's messy. He's got mess in his name too. He's like looking mm -hmm. to me. He's like, I'm doing. I'm delivering this slide. <laughs> hey, sorry, we do not have a slide. I'm sorry, Sonia Morgan and Countess tell us because you remember when Sonia was Sonia and Luann were like, oh God, tell them our last names. And That's like, later in the episode. Oh, it is. Yeah. Oh, God, everything's blending together. Uh, anyway, well, Lee, he probably Lee Messer saw their names is, on that and was like, I'm going down the mess. I'm a messy Messer Smith. I'm going to go meet Luan and Sonia. We have a slide now. We have a uh, slide. He probably had the most annoying campaign posters for a city council thing like, clean up the mess with Messer Smith. 
yeah. or like I I won't get dirty even though I'm a mess or Smith, you know, and it's all over the place. Be a mess, get a messer, get a messer addiction with meth. I am related to Deborah Messing. <laughs> 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 she was originally a master smith she had to change it for hollywood that's the that's all one big sign yeah so sonia's like so are you excited and he's like oh absolutely we've been waiting for this for almost two years and lou's like, wow this is totally snatched look at this playground it's so snatched it has screens solar panels for ac i mean it really has it all uh yeah, you think kids are gonna be in there? No, there are gonna be some <laughs> methy messertins in there. Meth yeah, gonna be in there. Meth heads will be in there. It's um, less than a week. You're gonna have a pile of shit in there with some uh, empty fucking glass pipes. I'm telling you that. Well, at least those meth heads will have a snatched playground to play in. Did I mention it snatched? I just learned that word and use it incorrectly. <laughs> So now, uh, Brian Connor, Brian Con, Brian Connor from Swing Kingdom. Sorry, I was calling them Swing Kings. It's Swing I used to Kingdom. Be the queen there. <laughs> you ever see that movie Eating Raul? Who's based off of me? So um, she's uh, that he's there, and so I'm just like, you know, I love these colors, green and white. I mean, it's really wonderful. It really blends in with the lawn and everything that we paved over, and it's just really wonderful. And I know I wore special drawers for this. Yeah, I wanted to. And by drawers, I mean I wore nothing. I have no no underwear on. So she's like, we wore bras for this special Children's Day in the park. And Brian's like, okay, guys, I'm gonna get this going. Okay. And he's like, where's he from? I love those shorts. It's mm -hmm. called Costco. By the way, I need to go there. They have really good fashion. <laughs> I've worn a lot of, got a lot of Costco clothes, guys. So yeah. Leanne, uh, not Leanne, uh, Lee, Brian Lee, Lee Messersmith, whoever <laughs> is. Uh, he plays a joke and he locks them in to the playground house, which by the way, this is not a good playground if you can lock children into the playhouse. <laughs> what the what kind of sadistic fuck listen, is this guy? Listen, I fully expect to see this playground on the sequel to Mayor of East Town because this really feels like it's something like they found the body. <laughs> it was in the uh, playground. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. The one's like, wow. I mean, Sonia's like, wow, Luann's already locked in. <gasps> Everyone's going to know she built this place. Luann, the playground you get locked into when you misbehave. <laughs> so uh, Craig is like, uh, give the city a break for a day. Oh, yeah. He's like, oh, yeah, keep them in there. Keep Give the city a break for a day. Makes, makes more sense when I say it that way. Triggered. So, Fish yeah. gotta swim. Birds gotta fly. That was my first number in prison. This sort of reminds me of prison, but at least prison was a big house. Get playhouse. me a penis. <laughs> like, oh my God, get her out before she <laughs> sings again. They're going to throw another bologna sandwich at my face. I already feel it. Oh, get me out of here. So Luann is driving in the truck, blasting, feeling Giovanni, which is hilarious, all through yeah. the town, and spraying Listerine in her mouth, which I'm like, well, that's her ball spray. So I guess she we really know where she's that. coming from. Yep. And um, guys are digging holes, and uh, they're uh, a company is that's not Swing Kingdom is building a fence. They're that's just um, we're back at that, their control. their company is actually called Fence Whores. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> so they're doing fences, and um, a guy's like, "All right, here's what we heard. You guys want three runs in the bed?" And so he's like, "Oh my god, don't say that right after Luann's had Dairy Queen." <laughs> She's literally had winds in her bed. Did we already go over that part? Uh, also, there's this random shot of Sonia watering plants with her iced coffee, which <laughs> may have um, questionable results. Although, mm -hmm. apparently, coffee grounds are good for plants, apparently. Yeah, I, I think don't know. that would be good for them, right? I don't know if the coffee itself is good. I think it's mm -hmm. sort of acidic. So, um, so this guy, they're, they're, they're drilling holes to put the fences in everything and Luann's like this run cannot happen fast enough for me so rather than take donations we decided we would just pay for it ourselves which means it'll take another 10 years because we're doing it installments of 30 dollars a day yeah it's like all we need to do is a few cameos to pay for this we'll be fine um so sonia's like uh this is sonia morgan okay so now they're calling who are they calling fence people who are they calling the I don't I know who, who they're, they're calling. calling. 
I think there, I think was this a flashback? It's a flashback of them calling, yeah, deciding them to pay for phone. it. I think right. So they're sitting in bed and they're like, "Okay, we need to order a fence." So this is them calling the fence company, and Sony's like, "Hello, this is Sonia and Luann. You don't know who we are." And Luann's like, "Tell them our last names." <laughs> She's like, it's, "Okay, this is Sonia Morgan and Luann de Lesseps." <laughs> <That's laughs> like, oh work. God! Oh, you got to be smooth. You got to be chill about it. <laughs> it's just Craig. Hold, please. God damn, these fucking women won't leave me alone. Well, well, Animal Shelter, the good news is we paid for your fences. The bad news is we only paid for a copy of Fences by August Wilson from Barnes & Noble. Here it is. Enjoy. So now they are uh, helping with the fence. And Luann's like, what is this drill? And the guy's like, it's called Little Beaver. She goes, excuse me? (laughs) It's been a long time since I've heard that. (laughs) <laughs> Do you have one called Holland Tunnel Beaver? I'll fuck that one. <laughs> oh, okay. Let me use this little beaver. Oh, oh, my boots. Oh, I think I hit a rock. I hit a rock. Wow. I mean, it's not a gold mine. <laughs> Put that in the follies, okay? It's not a gold mine. It's not a gold mine, okay? I'll pantomime an auger, and then I'll say it's not a gold mine. Okay, you got it in there? Great. What just happened here? And the guy's like, um, I think you just hit a rock. And she's like, huh, I only like rocks in my drinks. Ha ha! <laughs> Put that in the follies too. We'll start with the, okay, we'll start with the gold mine thing. Follow up with rocks in my drinks. We'll find oh, okay. a third. And there's one guy there who just hates her. He like refuses to smile. So she keeps trying to tell more jokes. And he's like, I fucking hate you. It's like a husband at a crap and show. <laughs> so um, Luann's like, hey, Bobby. So Bobby comes out and she's like, we're going to do this Saturday, right? You ladies, that's when we're doing this. Is that still the plan, you ladies, on Saturday? I call it you Saturday night. So Hi, I'm sorry. I'm it. the famous person. I should be talking. So I did a little drilling and it was like exercise. You know, my whole body was shaking, if you know what I mean. It was sort of like I was having sex. And uh, Bobby's like, uh huh. She goes, well, you know, you got to get it where you can. She goes, yeah, I get mine from chasing dogs because I have a job chasing dogs. She goes, huh, huh, I get mine from chasing tail. In the Follies, that was the third joke. Put that right in there. We're set. No more auditions. <laughs> what a weird conversation this was. <laughs> wow, I was just uh, drilling something. It was like I was getting some. Bobby's like, yeah, I get some when I run the dogs. I was like, what? Bobby. Cut Bobby. <laughs> Fire Bobby, okay? Fire the lady playing my mother in my biopic. Okay, she's done. Bobby's done. Just creeped us all out. Bring in Francis Fisher. So, <laughs> Lee, so now we got... <laughs> that. Now that is good casting. Redhead. Ronda Redhead. Carol. And also just the pathos. I think Francis great. Fisher would really get the pathos there. So thanks, Ben. Good yeah, you're welcome. It's a compliment. It's a high compliment. <laughs> So, um, Lee, so now it's time for the ribbon cutting ceremony for the playground. So, Lee Master Smith is like, We've been wanting to make this playground for two years. So, now we're here at the ribbon cutting, and Luann, they're just standing there. Luann's like, Wow, a ribbon cutting, all for my new cabaret show. This was so kind of them. So Aunt Sonia's like, oh, beautiful. Do you love it, everybody? Do you love it, town? And they love it. And they're hugging everybody. And then Sonia goes, Lee wanted a hammock. And it came with a hammock. And I love, we cut to a little chubby girl who's just already in the hammock. She's taking it over. Like, this is totally me at the park. Who puts a hammock in a park? Who's designing these? You put a lockable room and then you put a hammock. This is for children to play, okay? This is not for <laughs> little Ronnies to just sit there and do nothing, all right? It definitely, yeah. So, so Lou, Luan- a beanbag chair in a 24 hour <laughs> fitness. Like, who does that? <laughs> that girl is never leaving, okay? Uh, well, anyway. I just want to say, now that we've assembled all the most important people of Benton, Illinois, first of all, it is an honor for me to be the most famous person you all have met. That is really so wonderful. And as I stand here with these oversized scissors, uh, I just want to say, this has really been a dream come true. A dream come true, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the the people of Benton, we worked so hard. Making a single phone call and oh, getting a phone sake. call back. Oh, God, Lou. And we have kids. We have kids of our own. Which makes us so proud. 
<laughs> to work on this project, I would just like to say, on my own, <laughs> pretending is beside me. Did I ever tell you you're my line? Did I ever tell you I'm my hero? I'm everything I wish I could be. All right, I want to thank Fred. I want to thank his wife, Wilma. Uh, I want to <laughs> thank Craig. Craig, I still don't understand your eyebrows, but I love you, Craig. To the people of Benton, to Sue, please stop calling me for a credit card. I barely wore that wig. To Kristen, to Bethany Frankel. I want to thank uh, Bethany Frankel for stealing my haircut. That was a wonderful moment for me and my hair. To Kristen at the diner, I'm back on dairy, so you can start putting cheese on my ham sandwiches. Oh, I'd like to thank um, Akash at the motel who gave us a new mattress after Luann said her dairy queen all over, all over the <laughs> one we were giving. And most of all, I'd like to thank that nameless gay man who brought us here to have another TV show. It's been a fun time, and we've all enjoyed it, and we've really appreciated this season finale. What? There's five more episodes? Oh, <laughs> Oh, I see. And Sonia's like, Jesus Christ, wrap it up. Read a room, bitch. And it just cuts <laughs> to the little girl in the hammock like. <sighs> Can a bitch hammock in peace around here? So she, we welcome you to your new playground and no one else gets to talk. I'm going to cut the ribbon right out. And I'd like to name it the Feeling Giovanni Park. <laughs> now, do remember that if you are to play on this playground, you must follow all rules of girl code. Girl code. I got it, those scissors. I'm the one who got it, those scissors for free, by the way. Thank you, Giovanni. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, this is the best jungle. This is the best jungle gym money can buy. I mean, I'm just telling you. Look, they got a little swing like Luann wanted. They've got a hobby horse like I wanted. I mean, who doesn't love a hobby horse? Have you ever gotten fucked on a hobby horse? There's no better way. Craig's like, this is the neighborhood I grew up in. So. <laughs> For me, but bring something back to the neighborhood. It just, I just touched me. Wow, Craig, touching yourself much? We were the one who got the park. Jesus <laughs> Christ, Craig, drop the eyebrow pencil. Get out of the camera's way, all right? Uh, Craig, will you be reimbursing us for your third? Apparently, that you are taking credit for for this playground. Get out of here. <laughs> hey, listen, Sue, we're giving Craig some credit on the. On the playground, so he's going to pay my wig, my wig bill, all right? <laughs> so then the wind's like, ooh, a tire swing. I'm a, I'm a lady of the people. I know how to use these. I'll just insert my derriere right in that giant hole. And oh, no. Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm like Dorinda's emotional state. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. And she gets stuck. Her bony ass gets stuck in the swing. And that's where we leave the ladies of welcome to crappy lake. Yeah, fun times. Fun, hilarious times. They got the playground built. I was surprised. So I guess... Silly show. Yeah, just more antics. And <laughs> yeah, just we'll see it. what they have to on their task list next, next week. Well, everybody, thank you so much for being here. We love being here. Thanks for everybody on YouTube. Hi, thanks for everyone on Patreon demand. Hi. Hi. Uh, comment what you think our live show should be called. The starting... Next week, the week after, maybe the week after. We literally don't know yet. <laughs> okay. Yeah. But follow us on at Watch What Crappens on Instagram. I'm at Ronnie Karam. Ben is at Ben Mandelker on Instagram. Um, and we'll be announcing that shit soon. So join us, won't you? We sure love you join guys. Us. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Watch What Crappens would like to thank its premium sponsors. Ain't no thing like Alison King. Ashley Savoni, she don't take no baloney. She's not just a Sheila, she's a Daniela. Itchels. Aaron McNicholas, she don't miss no trickleus. She's never scary, it's the Green Fairy. Jamie, she has no less namey. Hava Nagila Weber. Sip some scotch with Jessica Trotch. She's a little bit loony. Junie, she's always supplying, it's Kelly Ryan. Kristen the Piston Anderson. You're never alone with Lacey Monteleone. Let's give a kisserino to Lisa Lino. Megan Berg, you can't have a burger without the Berg. Roo Roo La Roo. The Bay Area Betches, Betches. And our super premium sponsors. Somebody get us 10 cc's of Betsy MD. We're taking the gold with Brenda Silva. Let's get real with Caitlin O'Neill. 
Don't get salty with Christine Pepper. Can't have a meal without the Emily sides. Nobody holds a candle to Jamie Kendall. She's not harsh. She's Jill Hirsch. My favorite Murdo, Karen McMurdo. We love him madly. It's Kyle Pod Shadley. Let's go on a bender with Lauren Fender. We want to hang with Liz Lang. The incredible edible Matthew sisters. Nancy Cease and DeSisto. Give him hell, Miss Noel. She's the queen bee. It's Sarah Lemke. Shannon out of a cannon, Anthony. Let's take off with Tamla Plain. She ain't no shrinking Violet Kuchar. We love you guys. Hey, Prime members, you can listen to Watcher Crafts ad free on Amazon Music. Download the Amazon Music app today. Or you can listen ad free with Wondery Plus in Apple Podcasts. Before you go, tell us about yourself by completing a short survey at Wondery.com slash survey. Since his death in 2009, the world has struggled with how Michael Jackson should be remembered, as the king of pop or as a monster. I'm Leon Nafok, the host of Fiasco and the co-creator of Slow Burn. And I'm Jay Smooth, a hip-hop journalist and cultural commentator. Michael Jackson was accused of child molestation for the first time in 1993. Our new podcast, Think Twice, Michael Jackson, is the story of what came before and what came after. Throughout the podcast, we explore what makes Michael Jackson seemingly uncancelable. And we dig into the complicated feelings so many of us have when we hear Billie Jean at the grocery store. Through dozens of original interviews with people who watched the story unfold firsthand, Think Twice is an attempt to reconcile our conflicted emotions about Michael Jackson, the man, with our deep-seated love of his art. Listen to Think Twice, Michael Jackson, wherever you get your podcasts, or you can binge the entire series ad-free.